Oy vey, you think you have problems? My next guest had his amazing miracle investigated by no less than the FBI. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, here with Gene and Nancy Mullinax. Now, listen, uh, married at how old? Well, I got married when I was 17, but I tried when I was 13, and then back when I was 14, they sent me home, told us to grow up. So we Shame went, on you. <laughs> 13 we years old, you yeah. wanted to get married? But at 23, tragedy hit you. Oh, big time. I was working on an insurance building there in Little Rock, my hometown, four-story office building. I'd been having a little trouble hemorrhaging a few times, and I hadn't told anybody about it. And... Um, I was working on this uh, scaffold, about four stories up on the scaffold, and a drill motor had fallen off the scaffold and hung before it got to the floor. And I lay down on my chest to retrieve the drill motor. And when I did, I just blacked out. Blood went everywhere. I began to hemorrhage. They took me off of my job, took me to our company doctor by the name of Millard Black. <clears throat> he said, it's the worst case of tuberculosis I've ever seen. Now, that was his right. words. Uh, it turned out not to be TB. It was uh, something else. But anyway, they sent me to T TB Sanatorium in Boonville, Arkansas. I was up there six weeks, came back home. My doctor said, we're going to have to operate. and going to have to cut a little hole and a little window. That was his word. Going to cut a little window and go in there and see what's causing this hemorrhaging. Well, said the window turned out to be from the back of my neck all the way down my back through every rib I got over to the middle of my stomach. They jacked me apart and took me. In fact, one doctor said, I massaged your heart to six and a half hours. That was in my hands, six and a half hours. Mm. Now, that was back in 54 when they do surgery a little different now, but they took out my right lung, three ribs. And Nancy, how did and you handle this? Uh, he was 23. How old were you? Uh, 23. <laughs> How did you handle this? this is, uh, well, it was hard because we had two little babies at the time. So I immediately, you know, tried to get a job and go to work because he had to quit work. And uh, I didn't, you know, I really didn't feel like I was going to have a husband long. Hmm. What did the doctor say? How what was your prognosis? Well, it wasn't good. In fact, I went um, in this condition with my shoulder dropped down, the ribs missing, and a hole in my back. I went to that in that condition for almost four years, three and a half years. And uh, then something happened. Well, you heard about a man by the name of A.A. A. Allen. Now, most people have never heard of him, but what you heard was some pretty bad things. Most people uh, at that time that did know of him knew some good things. What did you know about him? Well, I'd been told by my church that he was a fake and uh, that uh, he wasn't real and all that. So I went, when I went to the tent at first, when I went to the tent the first time, I went to see a circus. I thought it was a circus. I did not know it was a religious meeting. I'd Why never, did you even bother going? Well, I was going to a circus. A doctor huh. sent me home and told me ne I'd never work again. So I was going home a different way than I'd ever gone before. And I came down this big uh, divide there in, in Little Rock, uh, that um, Roosevelt Road. And the huge tent was sitting just a few feet off the road. And I thought, well, if I'm going to die and I'm never going to work again, I'm going to pull in here and see me a circus. And I tell them that it took me seven days to figure out it was a religious meeting. Yeah, but, it, it was a tent revival, was it? and was he had lots of miracles. Yeah, lots of miracles. Saw miracles. But you were told what about him? Well, I told I was told that he was a fake. And uh, so, so you, you that he wasn't you, real. You, you, you got to talk to him. What did he have to say? Well, the first time I, I met him was on a Sunday afternoon after I'd been going to this meeting for seven days. Yeah, but you must have seen people that were said they were healed. I did, but I couldn't see anything on the outside. See, it, it was all on the inside. Everything that happened to the people that I sat around and looked at was always on the inside, nothing on the outside. Yeah, but did, did you think they all were lying? I thought they were. Huh. I honestly thought they were. I thought he was taking up all these poor people's money and all this and that. And I had a, a real stirring inside of me that I, that I was going to take that microphone away from him and tell them all that he was a fake. 
You really wanted to do that? Oh, I wanted to so bad. You couldn't believe how bad I wanted to. You got to. chutzpah. That's a Hebrew word. It means nerve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just felt sorry for the poor people. It seemed like taking all their money. But um, what happened that really made me believe, two things. One, it was Sunday afternoon when the, the last day of the meeting. Now, were you Sunday at this afternoon. meeting on Sunday afternoon? Yes. Why yes. did you go? I mean, with your husband feeling that way and about ready to expose the charlatan, why did, would you even go? Well, he uh, got a prayer card and he wanted me to go with him and he, was, he wasn't really able to keep going by himself. And I was so concerned about him, but I was curious too, because <laughs> he was telling me all kinds of things. And, and I was really, because he was so frustrated. He'd say, I, it's not real. D do you think it's real? No, it can't be real. You know, just for a whole week, he'd just go backwards and forwards right, like that. The first time you saw him, what did he say to you? What did you say to him? Well, the first time I ever had a conversation with him, he asked me, did I think that God would heal a Nazarene? I told him I was Nazarene. I uh -huh. wasn't a Nazarene. I didn't know, you know, but anyway, her mother <laughs> was. Full of it. <laughs> her mother was, and I thought she was a good person, so I'd just hang on to that. But anyway, he, he said... Uh, you think God would heal a Nazarene? I said, I sure do. Don't you? And he said, yeah. And he said, well, just what's wrong with you? So I unbuttoned my shirt. Now, this is in a tent meeting where there's mm. probably 20,000 people. Unbuttoned my shirt and opened up and showed him the bright red scar where I'd lost mm. everything. And I said, I want every bit of that back. And I, in my mind, thought it was going to come from him. And if it didn't, I was going to work him over with a microphone. You really I, just, I thought it was going to come from him. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know anything about God. Okay. Hardly. So you came back on Sunday with your wife. You're ready to ring the microphone around his neck. Yeah. So what happened? Well, I was in the line of about 650 people. Now I was so weak that uh, I couldn't stand up all that much time. All that time. So they had an usher who had a chair, and he'd sit right behind. He'd stand right behind me. And when I got tired, I'd sit down. Mm -hmm. Well. During this time, there was a man in front of me that must have weighed 350, maybe 400 pounds. And I had never really noticed him. There was so much commotion going on and, and everything, so I'd never, never really noticed him. He had a little baby, and he was doing like this in front of him, and I couldn't see the baby, and I didn't know why he was moving and all that. But anyway, all of a sudden, he puts that baby up over his shoulder, and the baby has a growth about the size of a dime, maybe a nickel, somewhere long in there. And the baby was sucking on that uh, bump. And I thought, you know, that baby might be going to get healed. And I knew that lump was come. on the On the, on the outside, yeah, okay. right in here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And it had huge purple vein running down through here. And I didn't know anything about cancer, you know. And I don't know if I've even heard the word. I guess I had. But anyway, I didn't know the baby had cancer. And um, I thought if that baby could get healed, they can't con a baby. I might believe this whole thing. That's show. a pretty good thought, you know? Mm -hmm. That really is a pretty good thought. Let's find out what happened to the baby. Don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hello, YouTube Mishbucha. Mishbucha is a Hebrew word, it means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, here with Nancy and Jean Mullinax, and we found out that Jean had a tragedy. 23 years of age, he had his lung removed, he had his, some of his ribs removed, he had a hole in his back, he couldn't work, he couldn't do anything, it was good for nothing. Uh, but he went to a tent meeting of an evangelist that he thought was phony, and he went there to expose him. But he, he brings his wife. But he sees right in front of him a man holding a baby. And this baby had uh, some sort of a lump on the lip. And you, Nancy, you were telling me, what did she use the lump for, the baby? She used it as a pacifier. Huh. And, and so you said, if that baby's healed, you'll believe this, this man, A.A. Allen, this evangelist, is not a faker, but he's for real. So what happened? Well, as we made our way on up toward the front, 
uh, where the pe different people were prayed for, and still again, I couldn't see anything that was, everything was heals on the inside. And I wanted to see something. And uh, this little baby kept sucking on that bump, and I'd keep saying, no, nah, this is not what's gonna happen, you know, that something, yeah, this guy's gonna be prayed for. But anyway, we made our way up toward the front. Alan makes a bold statement. He stepped out on the stage, and he points his finger, and he says, I'm not even gonna pray for this baby. And a thought ran through my mind, if you don't, you're going to eat that microphone. Because that was my only hope. You mean you and were going to help him eat it? I was going to help him. So he points at that. By then, I'd gotten around in front of this baby. I'd got right up in the baby's face. He had told that the baby had cancer. It had like two or three weeks to live. Big old huge purple vein down through here. He said, I'm just going to point and that thing's going to go. And I thought, you're a bigger fool than I had you figured out to be. Sure enough, he pointed, and like a, just that quick, that thing left that baby's face. In the name of Jesus. And yeah, and, and it just left, and a beautiful, pretty skin what came over. What about the veins? It, everything cleared up. Just, it was just so phenomenal. It baffled me. How could that me. be? How could it just... It was God's, that only happens in the it movies. It was God's power. I know it, but it happened right in front of my eyes. And so I, I had made such a spectacle out of myself by going and looking at all these people. When you go pray for somebody, I'd get up and go look at them, see if they got healed. And, you know, different ones. So he, he called me and he said, come on up here. And he told about my condition, what mm -hmm. I, my, my lung being moved and all that. And so he said, come on up here on the stage. Well... I'd been told that he's going to, he had the stage wired, that was one thing, and the other thing was they pour something on you when you get up there, and makes you act crazy, you know, because people were jumping and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, he so got... So you weren't going to let them no, pour anything on you? No, nothing on me. I could so tell. I walked up on the stage with both fists doubled up, waiting for somebody to pour something on me. I was going <laughs> to put something on them. So I got up there. See, everybody else been going across a little platform as he prayed for me, and he called me up on the stage where he was. And so that kind of, you know, was different to me, and I thought he'd going to do something to me. But anyway, he asked me to raise my hands, and I raised my hands. First of all, he asked, he asked that everybody pray for me in the audience. And I was so prejudiced against the black people. And so I looked out there, and the thought ran through my mind, wouldn't you like to go out there and sit down in that black man's lap, put your arms around him? And I thought, they have got something poured on me already. You know, make me think something like that. And all of a sudden, I began to hear something cry on the inside of me. I've been crying on the inside because that hate was coming out. And all of a sudden, I raised my hands like he had asked me to do. And it sure enough felt like somebody poured like thick oil on me. And I turned around to see where it was coming from, and there wasn't anybody there. And all of a sudden, it felt like somebody just opened my mouth, put a rubber hose in me, and <laughs> blew me up. And, and he asked, is anybody in this tent that knows this man? Well, I had some friends there, and her people were there, but nobody said they knew me. But this guy, Dudley Brown, who weighed 185 pounds, was in the back of the tent standing up. And he hollered, I know him. He's my best friend. He comes running down the front of the tent, gets over the rail, and before he can get on the stage, I reach down and pick him up. Now, Sid, I couldn't pick up my six-month-old baby without hemorrhaging. And there I was, weighed 117 pounds. But what happened to your ribs, your lung, the whole? Everything went in. I mean, just like that. As fast what do you mean as went in? It wasn't there to go in. I know, but God has a spare parts department. He put it back in. Nancy, what did you think of that? Well, the first thought I thought when he picked up Duddy, I thought, oh, no, my kids won't have a, have a father. He's going to hemorrhage to death right there. And I looked up, and he didn't hemorrhage. And Gene started acknowledging it, and I knew that he was ready to tell this man off, you know, if... It didn't work, and Dudley Brown was such a, a precious Christian man, too, and he started counting the ribs and everything, and Dudley acknowledged it, and I knew they wouldn't uh, what, would what lie is, about what, it. What did the doctor say? Oh, that was funny. Oh, hold that thought. I'll tell you what. We'll be back in just a moment. I know you're not going away, so I don't have to say don't go away. You know what I mean? Be right back. <laughs> Hello, 
Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, here with Nancy and Gene Mullinax. I mean, it's almost unbelievable. He's missing a lung. He's missing three ribs. He's got a hole in his body that, that won't fill up. Instantly, instantly, he feels uh, something pour on him. He's instantly healed. And after he's instantly healed, what was the f f first thing that you said? Do you remember? No, I don't remember exactly. Do you remember what yes, he said? Yes, he was jumping up and down, and he's not an emotional person, saying, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. And what were you doing? <laughs> I was sitting there just completely amazed. So what did the doctor say? <clears throat> I went to the doctor, and he kept making x-rays. Cause he, Why did he keep well, he doing it? Well, he thought I had the ones mixed up because back then you couldn't get x-ray very quick. You had, we had to go from the fourth floor to the seventh floor to get the x-rays. And so I'd come back down with x-ray and he'd look at it and he'd send me back up. He said, you got the wrong x-ray. So I'd go back up and get another <laughs> one. And i come back and it's the same one. Finally, he floor scoped me. And, you know, he could see on the inside of me then. And the first words he said, I won't say what he said, but it was a pretty rough word. It wasn't, I'll be doggone, but it's something like I that. I understand. <laughs> so um, he asked me to tell him what happened. I did. And he introduced me across the hospital. My sister was a nurse then. He introduced me across the hospital. I'd go to the make around with him, and he'd say, this is my miracle man, as though he had something to do with it. <laughs> Were many people healed under the A.A. Allen ministry? Oh, my, yes. After I, <laughs> after I, I learned what was going on. I have a surprise for you. I have a surprise for you. We obtained some old footage of A.A. A. Allen. Let's roll that now. I command this cancer die. Pass from the stomach. You double let this man eat. You cannot starve him to death. I claim life for this man. I curse this cancer in the name of Jesus. Now let these legs walk again. Let this body be supported again. Let this stomach receive food. Give this man strength tonight. Let the power of God go through him. Raise him from this bed this minute, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Baba, in the name of Jesus. I command you, give up. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Come on. In Jesus' name, I command blind eyes. See! I look fine. I look fine. <laughs> Real good. I have been seen. Come here. Oh, yes. Do you see the pastor? Yes, I do. How's he look? Well, he looks fine. <laughs> That is wonderful. I tell you, that's wonderful. I get so excited, but I noticed that that blind woman that got her sight back was black. What do you think of black people today? Oh, I love them. I don't, oh, God, that's a cliche. You no, don't really. God changed my life. You wouldn't know how I hated black people. You can't even begin to know. I was, I was you raised know something? that way. I don't believe how anyone can call themselves a true Christian no. and hate anyone. They can't, black or white. They can't. See, God changed me from the inside out. I had, a, I had an experience that totally changed my life. But why, let me ask you this, why did the FBI investigate A.A. A. Allen and then investigate you? My picture was on the front cover of A.A. A. Allen magazine. He told the story. They not only investigated me, but a bunch of other people that claimed to be healed. What'd they find out and about you? They, they documented the, the story as a bona fide miracle. 
And, and what about the other miracles of AI? Well, the, every one they investigated, which was 14 that I know of at that time, every one of them was documented. Now, Phil Donahue had you on his TV mm, show. Right. And one of the things that I think is so wonderful is when someone has miracles like this, they have faith for miracles and hearts are being healed. I mean, uh, tell me about someone with a heart problem that you've prayed for. One lady who was waiting on a heart transplant it was in a little town south of Ar uh, Little Rock in Arkansas. She was waiting on a heart transplant. And I mean, just as quick as we prayed for her, instantly she was healed. And we heard later that she'd uh, gone back to work. She's doing fine and her heart was perfect. Look in the camera right now and you pray for hearts. One minute prayer, quick. Okay. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come against any heart trouble, disease, whatever it might be that's wrong with hearts. I command those hearts to work perfectly in the name of Jesus. Let every one of them be healed. Not one that's watching right now. Every one will be healed in Jesus' name. But you know about a heart that is even worse than a natural heart with a problem? It's a wicked heart. And it says that the heart is the most deceitful of all things. So you may think you're a good person, but compared to God's holiness, you stink. And I tell you a fact, God loves you even in your stinking condition. God wants you to repent of your sin. He's too good. Don't get thrown off by religion and tradition. I mean, you go direct to God through the only way, the Passover lamb, the blood of Jesus. If you believe that blood washes away your sins, then repent of your sins. Believe that blood does the job and that you're clean. And now that you're clean, boldly proclaim, Jesus is my Messiah and Lord. I tell you that there's a way of, to have intimacy with God. Those miracles are nothing compared to the miracle that you saw what happened to Gene. His heart was changed. He literally loves black people. That's the problem with, with uh, racism in countries. They need intimacy with God. Religion will not solve the problems in races only intimacy with God. There is something more. There is a hope. Some of you feel hopeless. There is a hope for you. There really is a hope. And you can know God for yourself. You can know that he'll just put his arms around you right now and love you. Isn't that what you need? Isn't that what you're crying out for? Go to your father because he really loves you. He really cares about you. You're special. They are special. The rest of us